Uh, this week we're going to be talking about uh, Belgian beers and also one Dutch beer. Uh, Belgian beer is probably what really got me into craft beer full on in the first place. Uh, a lot of really big, complex, strong flavours coming through. Not for the faint-hearted, a lot of them. Uh, we're talking 8, 9, 10 and 15 percent out of these beers, so it's not something you're going to have a few in the course of a night. Uh, the first one we're looking at uh, today is uh, Gordon Carlos Classic. It's won awards at the World Beer Awards three times, it's won its category. Uh, it is indeed a classic beer. This is probably my favourite Belgian beer uh, of all time, I'm quite partial to it. It's named after the golden coins of Emperor Charles V, the brewery that, uh, that brews the beer dates back to about 600 years. This particular beer though, only brewed since the 1930s. Second beer we'll be looking at today is uh, Vishmal Triple. Vishmal is one of only uh, 11 Trappist breweries around the world. Uh, six in Belgium, two in the Netherlands, and one each in Austria, Italy, and the USA. It's part of the overall Cistercian Order of Monks, and to be a certified Trappist beer, uh, you have to A, have the beer directly uh, brewed or under direct supervision of the monks within the walls of the monastery, and all, it's a non-profit as well, so all uh, monies from the beer go back into running the monastery and back into the social work that the monks uh, contribute to in their community. So you can feel good about drinking this beer, not just the 9.5% uh, the alcohol level that uh, we have there, but also knowing that uh, there's a lot of good work going on in the community around the monks as well. The third beer we're looking at is Rodenbach uh, Grand Cru. Uh, this has been a bit of a revelation to me this year. It's one of those beers which features pretty much in every single book you'll read about the best beers you must try before you die and this year is actually the first time I got around to trying it. The late uh, beer critic Michael Jackson, uh, not the pop star, uh, regard this as one of the true world classics of beer and a connoisseur's beer as well, but I find that a lot of people I introduce this to um, are very receptive to it. It is a quite a challenging flavour at first, uh, but uh, well worth uh, the effort. Uh, originally this brewery dates back to the 1830s, and I guess it's the history that comes with Belgian beer that I really really enjoy um, more than most things really um, and, that, and the fact that this really really tasty beers. And our final beer today is uh, from a Dutch brewery called De Molen. Uh, it's called uh, Bommen en Granaten uh, or roughly translated uh, into uh, bombs and grenades. Perhaps one of the things I like the most about this beer is that the name actually comes uh, from a uh, line in Tintin so everyone remembers Captain Haddock and his uh, creative swearing uh, in Dutch, he says a uh, thousand bomben and granaten, or a thousand thundering typhoons, and that's uh, where the beer's name comes from. Uh, it's a big, big, big beer. It's 15.2%. Uh, it's sort of the upper reaches of a uh, beer's alcohol level without starting to get really creative in your brewing uh, techniques. An English barley wine with a lot of American influence as well. These guys are another brewery that uh, contributes widely into uh, their community. Uh, a lot of environmental initiatives, especially around uh, techniques in their brewing. And another really fantastic thing they do is uh, they contribute to an initiative which helps uh, people with uh, learning difficulties, uh, learn skills to enter the workforce uh, in their local area as well. So like uh, most Belgian beers, this should be served at around about 10 to 13 degrees Celsius. It does open up a lot more flavours within the beer. Um, that goes for a lot of beers in general. Uh, you don't want to chill anything down too cold. It does dull your taste buds uh, effectiveness. Uh, this pours a lovely sort of tawny brown colour. Yeah, hold that to the light, so it's a quite a deep ruby red. There's a lovely toffee uh, like malt aroma on the nose there. I think I love a little raisin, uh, prunes as well. That is pretty damn good. A lot of figs uh, on there as well. Again, the toffee coming through a little bit uh, dry, but very, very Moorish. Obviously that eight and a half percent coming into play. A really nice food match uh, for this is a uh, game, uh, big, big hearty stews and things like that. Uh, perfect on a, uh, a winter's evening. Obviously there's a bit of a sting in the tail of winter so far this year and uh, it's my choice. So the Vishmal is a bottle conditioned beer. Uh, so there is a amount of natural sediment in the bottom. So be very careful when you're pouring this beer. It pours a very light golden, almost straw like colour. And it's in fact because of the triple that Vishmal make that most triples in the world, if not all from memory, are exactly the style of beer. I have poured a little bit of sediment in there but it doesn't affect the flavour uh, too much. It's so a very herbal, uh, light hop aroma on the beer. Um, Putting notes of coriander, uh, pepper as well. And again, very strong coriander and pepper coming through on the palate. 
Uh, for nine and a half percent, this beer is very, very drinkable. It's not a very boozy body to it at all. Definitely one to be careful with. A fantastic food match here would be a probably grilled uh, asparagus with parmesan, a bit of black pepper as well. Rodenbach Grand Cru. Now this is bottled using one third, I say new beer, and two thirds uh, old beer, aged in oak vats for up to two years, I believe, uh, which differs from the standard Rodenbach, which is the other way around, so two thirds new beer, uh, one third old beer. Again, quite a, a tawny brown colour, not as sort of vibrant looking as the other beers we've been looking at, at so far. But you've got that sharp sort of acidic nose to it as well. It's regarded as one of the, the style definers for Flanders Red style. So quite acidic, uh, sour notes as well, quite tart. I find a sweetness to it as well. I find it a very refreshing drink. You wouldn't think so to look at it, but uh, I recently shifted house and a couple of these afterwards went down a treat. Again, served uh, somewhere around about the 8 to 10 degree mark, not too cold. I'd recommend trying this with bacon wrapped scallops. Um, sounds fairly uh, decadent, but uh, I think it's the way to go. Other than that, quite often as a digestive after meal, uh, it's a dessert in itself. And our final beer is the Bormann in Granaden. If I can get it open, it's a good start. Now 15.2%, this is definitely one to be respected. Not a big head, uh, which would be typical uh, of a beer of this strength. But yeah, look at that lovely, vibrant uh, ruby, or almost like a, a Rimu brown colour, uh, looking at it there in the light. Now a lot of uh, sort of fruitcake, uh, sherry, dried fruit flavours coming through in the nose. As you expect, a big, big body in that again, and the fruitcake really coming through. A little bit dry, uh, quite peppery as well. And this really is a beer to be savoured pretty much by itself. There's a lot of things you could probably have with it. Uh, gammon would be quite nice. But for me, one of these, by the fireplace, reading a book, you really can't go wrong. Uh, which brings me to another point. Uh, tomorrow night, if you're watching this on a Wednesday, we've got a tasting with Beer Without Borders, one of our suppliers that we deal with in Wellington. And they supply this particular beer here. And this will actually be part of the tasting we're having tomorrow night. In fact, it'll be a Bordeaux barrel aged version of the Bombin and Granaden. Tickets are $30 from the bar. Uh, come along and grab yours. Ryan is a fantastic host. The, uh, he's from Wellington, will be presenting all these beers. Seven beers from the US, Netherlands, France, Australia, and Japan. Well worth coming along for that. Part of the tastings we do every month down here at the Hop, usually the last Tuesday, but this week, tomorrow, Thursday.